guys, it's Sarah and I'm here to do my January wrap up. January was a fantastic month. I still didn't get to absolutely everything that I really wanted to, but I still read nine books and that is incredible. And most of them were four or five stars, so that's even more incredible. All right, so I started out this month with an audiobook and I finished up The Gates of Evangeline. This is written by Hester Young, and this is the first book in her Charlie Cates series, which is a kind of murder, not murder, but well, there's murder in it, but <laughs> it's more of like a mystery with a little bit of paranormal in there. Uh, Charlie Cates is a journalist and she has discovered that she can actually talk to dead people and the dead communicate with her and help her kind of figure out exactly how they were killed or what happened to them. So this first book really focuses on a time when she's really discovering this ability and she ends up taking on an assignment to write a book about a real murder that happened years and years and years ago in Louisiana. So she travels from New York to Louisiana to kind of talk to this family and interview them and see uh, what kind of information she can put in the book. And of course, there's more to the story than everyone originally thought. And it was really good. I really enjoyed it. The audiobook was really good. I enjoyed the narrator. And I ended up giving this one four stars. And I read this in anticipation of reading the next book, which is called The Shimmering Road. And I have an arc of that. And it comes out in February. So I wanted to read this one first. So I kind of had a little bit of a background on the character. But it was four stars. I really liked it. The next book I read, I read in one sitting, and it was very good. It was very short, and that is The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. And uh, like I said, this is very short. It's about 55 pages, and it's a smaller book. But this is a short story that was originally published, I believe, in a uh, anthology that was written by George R.R. R. Martin. But this one follows a girl who has a very unique job, <laughs> a very adult job, and she ends up going into the psychic world or kind of she becomes a psychic and she ends up following a woman to her house because this woman believes her house is haunted and that it's affecting her child. So you kind of see what happens from there. But it was very, very good. I wish this were a full length novel. This definitely had the potential to really go into some really cool directions. Um, I just wish it were longer. It was really good. Four stars. The next book that I read was a book for book club and this month we read a book that had no pictures on the covers and we ended up reading The Road by Cormac McCarthy. This book was so sad. It was so sad. But it was good. It was very different and I liked the way that it was written. There were no chapters. It was just big pair like chunks of paragraphs throughout the whole thing. So I thought that was definitely unique and the way that it was written was very, very, very descriptive, and I could really picture myself standing on this road <laughs> and going through what they were going through. It wasn't super action-packed. This is a post-apocalyptic book about a man and his son who are trying to survive, basically, but the entire world has just crumbled around them. There's a lot in here about humanity and a lot about survival, and it wasn't like I said it wasn't very action-packed so a lot of people in my book club didn't like it because of that they like all the action and all the stuff but I really liked it I thought it was a very quiet beautiful book and don't get me wrong I like action I like adventure I like all that stuff that keeps me wanting to read and read and read but this one kept me interested the whole time and I just thought it was different in a very very good way and I gave it four stars the next book that I completed was one that I picked out for my TBR jar, and that was The Fringe Hours by Jessica Turner. And this is a nonfiction book all about trying to find time in your day to do things that you want to do and to figure out little subtle ways that you can put yourself first sometimes. And as a busy mom and wife, it definitely struck some chords with me and made me go, yeah. Sometimes I do feel like that. <laughs> and yeah, sometimes I do need to put other things aside or I need to say to know something so that I can say yes to myself. I had read quite a few reviews where it was very critical of the book and just kind of making it seem like this woman was selfish. And I thought that was completely opposite. I don't think she was selfish at all. I think as a woman and as a busy person in general, we all need time to ourselves sometimes. We all need time to make, to do things that we actually enjoy and that really feed us and really make us happy. 
And I thought that she had some really creative ways of trying to implement that. And I've been finding myself, as I'm doing things about my day, thinking, okay, I'm doing this right now. Is this important right now? Or could I go do something else for 10 minutes? Or do I have to take on this project? Or is there someone else who might do a better job who can do this project who had have more time? So I've really kind of been thinking about it. I'm not exactly applying it uh, consciously, but... As I'm going throughout my day, I'm kind of noticing that I'm using my time a little bit more wisely, and I really, really enjoyed it, and I gave this one four stars as well. And the rest of these books here that I'm going to talk about, I read as part of the biannual Bibliothon, which was a readathon that was held in the month of January, and then some of them I just finished throughout the rest of the month. But the first one that I finished for that readathon was Everything, Everything by Nicola Yoon. Wow. Was really good you guys. I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I was going to. I was afraid of the hype for this one because this one has been really really hyped up on booktube and a lot of people have just been raving about it and raving about it and I was like oh are they talking too much about it? Am I going to read it and be disappointed? But I was not. I flew through this. I read this in one day and I thought it was so good. It is a YA so the, char the main characters are younger but this follows a girl who is allergic to everything. She has a condition where she can't even leave her house. And if anyone comes into the house, they have to get decontaminated. Like any, absolutely anything could trigger a reaction and could kill her. So she really finds herself kind of being a prisoner in her own home. And then one day a new family moves into the house next door to them. And she starts forming a friendship with the boy in the house and kind of through the windows and then they start emailing and they're kind of going through this whole thing of trying to actually be friends even though she has this condition and it's really hard for them and they end up really helping each other out through some difficult times that they're both going through and it was really just really very good and I highly recommend it. And the next book I'm going to talk about is a reread for me, and that is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. My daughters and I started this in December, and then we finished it up this month in January. So um, we have been reading these illustrated editions together and listening to the audiobooks as well as we're reading along. Um, but yeah, my daughter is really enjoying these, and I'm enjoying revisiting Harry Potter as well. Five stars, obviously. Next book that I read for the um, readathon is This Is Where It Ends, and this is by Marika night camp and this one I actually ended up listening to on audiobook because I forgot that I purchased it <laughs> but I also got it from the library but this book was really good this book follows a school shooting and it goes over the time span of about 54 minutes I believe and you're seeing what is happening in each little time frame from different points of the school and from different characters points of view and it was really well done I thought it was very interesting it kept me on the edge of my seat a little bit. The only thing that really bothered me about it was the reaction that the shooter had to some things that were happening around him. I felt like he was not very aware of his surroundings, even though he has an incredibly high IQ and he seemed like he was very meticulous at planning out this attack. And for someone who spent so much time and was very meticulous about it, he didn't really realize what was going on around him and I thought that was a little bit strange but other than that I really enjoyed it. I liked the characters and um, kind of how everyone was tied together and it was devastating as well uh, but yeah really enjoyed it so this one was four stars as well. And the next one that I finished is City of Glass by Cassandra Clare. This is book number three in the Mortal Instruments series and I really really enjoyed this one. There was a lot of action in here and I liked Clary better in this one. <laughs> if you guys know City of Ashes, uh, she kind of drove me a little bit nuts. She was making some really rash decisions. And in this one, she actually got called out on it, and I really liked that. And there was finally, finally, something that was resolved in here that I've been waiting for three books for something to be resolved. And I'm like, come on, this is going to happen. Let's go. I know it's going to happen. It has to happen. And it finally happened in here. I won't give it away has to do with the two main characters. You probably know what I'm talking about, but geez, like finally. So uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this one and I'm excited to continue on into this world. Four stars. And the last book that I finished in the month of January is Fates and Traitors by Jennifer Chiaverini. 
if you guys follow me, you know I've been reading this for a while. It took me quite a while to get through this book. <laughs> this book is a historical fiction and it is about John Wilkes Booth and some of the women that were in his life around the time when he carried out his assassination of Abraham Lincoln. So this one was kind of confusing for me <laughs> about the way that I felt about it because overall it was a slower read for me. It wasn't incredibly action-packed. This took place obviously in the 1800s and it wasn't I don't know, it wasn't super action packed like I was thinking it would be because I mean, this is a man who assassinated a president. But it really followed a lot of his childhood. Um, so it followed the perspective of his mother, it followed the perspective of his sister, and then it went into a woman that he fell in love with and wanted to marry. And then also a woman who helped him carry out his assassination plot. And then towards the end there, it was actually told from his perspective. So that was kind of cool too. You kind of saw his thought process going on. And I don't know, it's so hard for me to wrap this up in words because overall, I really enjoyed the book. I thought it was very interesting to get a different side of the story as far as people that were in his life versus just from him. So I thought that was really cool because you got to see a little bit of his childhood and what he was like when he was growing up. And how he reacted to people and where his beliefs came from. So I thought that was all very interesting, but at the same time, it just wasn't like I couldn't put it down exciting. So I had a really hard time reading this one. <laughs> I ended up giving it a 3.5, um, mainly just because, you know, like I said, there was it wasn't like super, super exciting. It was just more interesting the entire time. So after I finished reading this, I was kind of in that mood and in that mind frame. I ended up watching the TV movie Killing Lincoln, which was based on the book Killing Lincoln that was written by Bill O'Reilly. And I've been wanting to watch that for a while. I just hadn't done it yet. And I thought, okay, I have this in my head. This is kind of going on. I'm going to watch this mini series, or it was like, it was a TV movie, like a two hour TV movie. So I watched it and realized that after Booth had killed Lincoln. He was fleeing and he was on the run. He ended up finding refuge in a tobacco farm. But while he was on the road trying to get somewhere where he could hide, he ran into somebody on the road and asked, hey, do you know if there's a place where I can rest for the night? And this man led him to the tobacco farm and said, this is a nice family. You know, they'll, maybe they'll take you in for a day or two. That man was named Oswald Swan and he was African American and from Maryland. My husband, his side of the his father's side of the family is African American and they're from Maryland and our last name is Swan. So I was like, holy crap, is this really happening? <laughs> so now I want to go back and do some lineage or do some ancestry with my husband on his side of the family to see if maybe they're their ancestors of my husband. I thought that would be really cool to find that out. But I was completely freaking out because it's very possible that that is one of my husband's descendants from his side of the family. So we'll have to see. I'm going to actually maybe try to get to that here soon. But I thought that was really cool. So that just kind of like freaked me out. But back to the book, historical fiction. So obviously this is based on history, but not everything is completely accurate. Um, a lot of it is made up, especially all the conversations and stuff. There's no record of that. But yeah, so I enjoyed it. 3.5. I enjoyed it. Okay, so during my wrap ups, I want to start talking about books that I had in my TBRs, but I did not end up reading. So I want to talk about them and talk about why I didn't get to them. And just kind of a reminder for me <laughs> on why I didn't get to them. And if I want to push them over to the next month. So the first one was a library book. And that is The Walking Dead Compendium Volume 2. I was not able to get to this. I just didn't have time. And I'm not going to be able to have time. I do have to take it back to the library tomorrow. So uh, this is really long. Although it is a comic book, I just didn't have time to get to it. So I'm just gonna have to grab this another time. Because uh, like I said, it's due and I got to take it back. So it's okay. But eventually I will get to this one. The uh, second TBR jar book that I picked out was The Lace Reader by Brunonia Berry. And this one I did not have a chance to get to in January, but I am going to start it actually tomorrow. And so I'm still excited to read it. Um, I already have my bookmark in ready to go, but I'm going to go ahead and get started on it tomorrow. So this is just going to be pushed to February. And I also had on my TBR With Love from the Inside by Angela Pestle. This is a book that was sent to me by Putnam uh, back in August when it came out. 
and I just haven't gotten around to reading it yet. And again, I still didn't get around to reading it. So um, I don't know. This is still sitting on my nightstand, so it's going to be something that I'm just going to have to get to when I can get to it. But I still want to read it. I really still want to. I'm just having trouble finding the time. All right, guys, that is it for my January wrap up. It was a really, really good reading month for me, even though I didn't get to quite everything that I had on my original TBR, but I'm still really happy with everything that I read. I read some really great books and I read some things that challenged me a little bit, so I thought that was great. So please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you read in the month of January. What was your favorite? What was your least favorite? Were there any good surprises in there for you? And I will be back again tomorrow with my February TBR. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye.